Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. For this video, we will be breaking down this mini mech explosion I made a while back. A couple of notes before we start though. Firstly, this effect was made on Cubichet's particle rework Godot branch, which I will link in the description below. It has more functionalities for the particle system, and it'll hopefully be in the next stable Godot 4 release. And secondly, most of the shader techniques I mentioned in this video are explained in my previous video about common shader techniques. I recommend you check that out first. I'll mark techniques in that video that I use for this one with asterisk. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with the anticipation. For the robot, I defined a curve and a gradient, which is basically a color curve, for its emission and color respectively. I made a script that interpolates along these curves and sets the material property as needed. The curves have an intense ease in behavior, starting out very slow, then ramping up quickly towards the end. To accompany the robot, we have the shine. The shine is just a billboard texture that scales up in two parts. First part is an ease out, just to establish its presence. Then the next part is an ease in, to follow the robot's ramping. We also add a little bit of rotation for some spice. Now we go to the beefiest part of the effect, the explosion. For the explosion, I want to tackle the cloud mesh first because I want to. I played around with the lighting a little, as I felt that the default tune shading was a bit harsh. I promise the shader isn't too complicated. I just define a dark color and a bright color and lurp between them depending on how the light would have originally affected the object. I smooth out the lighting edge to my liking through a smooth step function. I also added a Fresnel in there, but honestly, I don't think it made a difference. After lighting, I set up erosion and Y offset based on the particle's lifetime. The explosion uses four layers of cloud emitters, two ground ones and two upward ones with dark and bright versions. I won't go through every value I changed for the particle process material, but I will explain the main behavior. The values will be displayed on screen though, just in case. The ground clouds are Y-aligned to their velocity and burst outwards from the center very quickly with flatness, so they mainly move along the ground. These clouds then slow down towards the end with some damping. And again, for some spice, I added some tangential velocity towards the end. The ground cloud's bright counterparts generally follow the same behavior, but are of course very bright, but also dissipate much quicker. The upward clouds also generally follow the ground cloud's behaviors, but they burst upwards instead of outward along the ground. The next most noticeable part of the explosion are probably the rings. These rings scale up very quickly at the start, then continue growing but at a much slower rate. During the scaling, the rings also float up, rotate, and erode based on the particle's lifetime. Now we're moving on to the simpler parts of the explosion. We have the streaks, or spikes, which by themselves look kinda silly, but I think it adds a lot to the effect. These streaks are billboards and are also Y aligned to their velocity. They spawn along a random point in a circle on the ground and have a very slight out and upward velocity to align them properly. To emphasize their explosiveness, we scale them up quickly. Up next are the cute little embers. These embers are a flipbook and the frame is randomly chosen in the particle process materials animation property by setting the offset max to 1. Their movement is, as you might have guessed, also a burst outwards, but this time in a hemisphere. They also slow down and get more affected by turbulence towards the end of the effect. And lastly, we can't forget about the small shadow that our blast leaves. This is just a texture that gets spawned and fades out over time. Nothing too fancy really, but I think it helps tie the effect together. But we're not done yet. 
We still have our impact frame, which further emphasizes the power that this blast has. Our impact frame is achieved by taking a screenshot of the viewport. This is the code for the screenshot, and you can find it in the official Godot demo project, which is also linked below. You then move to the shader and grayscale the screenshot by averaging the value of the R, G, and B channels. After getting the grayscale value, we apply a step function to 1 minus the grayscale, so all the bright parts of our original screenshot become black and the rest are white. This creates a silhouette for our explosion at the impact frame. We leave this impact frame on the screen for a couple of milliseconds before hiding it. And that's it for the breakdown of this effect. I hope this video helped you out one way or another. And if you like this breakdown, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. A zip file of this project is available in my Patreon, which is again linked in the description. Although I can't package the robot with it as I bought it from Sketchfab, so it'll be replaced by a sphere. The robot's page will also be linked below if you want to check it out. Before I add any more links in the description, I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.